Hello everyone, my name is Brennan, and welcome to the second part to how to create a Valve Steam Machine in Blender. This is the second part, and um, on this tutorial we're going to be starting off looking at this image, a reference image, of the Valve Steam Machine, which I think I put uh, on my website, bshep.net. Pretty sure you will be able to download that. I'll make sure of it after I do this tutorial. So, um, so yeah, we have to make all these certain cuts on different areas, and like right here, as you can see, these two USB ports. Those are. Let me make this big. We can just have this in view. Um, yes, so we'll need to make a cut, two cuts, uh, one down here and one above, then two going this way, two going that way, so, and then uh, also some cuts to shape out this piece right here from what it looks like. It looks like these plastic pieces are separate from this center piece right here, and then maybe this piece right here is separate. Um, so we'll just go ahead and create that same effect. Maybe even create the glowing ring right there. That actually fades out um, from what it looks like, but it basically looks like a light underneath a clear type plastic right there. Um, sort of like the, uh, what is that, WD, like a storage hard drive. Uh, I figure out what it's called now, but anyway. So yes, let's um, go ahead and get started, add some cuts in, and uh, we'll be ready to do it. Right, so let's add, uh, let's start by adding two cuts down the middle, uh, lengthwise. So what we do is press Control R on the keyboard, and let me turn on the shortcut keys. Sorry about that. Should have had those on a long time ago. See, so should be underneath. Yeah. Probably didn't add them in the user preferences, but I can go ahead and do that. Go to user preferences and screen. Huh. Should be added. Let's see. Disabled. No disabled. Wow, so I must have screencast keys, but I don't see them in here. Or maybe this version of Blender doesn't even have screencast keys. I don't know. I hope so. It was because of edit mode. No. Let's measure. Screencast keys, where are they? Don't, I don't see them anywhere. Okay, then I guess I'll have to go without them. Alright, so let's go ahead and start by making a cut down the center. Scroll up. To form the initial shape, we have to make this cut. So let's... Uh, you scroll up once and it makes one number it makes two cuts actually number of cuts two as you can see down the corner right there smooth zero alt you can hold down alt I think to smooth or something like that alright so let's press control R and make two cuts and then left click uh, actually you can do control R and press uh, make two cuts and press escape I think oh, no 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 you place them then press escape there we go okay sorry alright let's scale them in a bit we can't exactly tell perfectly how actually let's go ahead and add this in in the background because why would we be doing it on this image looking at it instead of putting it in the background it's a lot easier if you just put it in the background like this so let's put it in the background and where is it there it is so we'll need to move this over let's move it over on the x-axis unless you have it lined up on the center of the grid probably do not going to I don't know if you do if you did or not um, all right so let's scale this in on the Y on the Z axis there we go it's probably about good maybe a little bit more right about there it's good all right so now we made our cut for the center piece let's go ahead and color that just so we know exactly what this piece is Trying to select it as an edge loop, pretty much like a a loop around this piece, around this box type piece. Mm. And select the vertices like this. Hold down Shift Alt on the keyboard and right click on each edge. 
and it selects them selects them as a loop around. Um, so what we want to do is color at least the front part right here. I deselected it by pressing B on the keyboard and using the box select, holding down the middle mouse button while I'm doing that though. See, there we go. It's, it does the opposite of selecting. So, deselects instead of selecting. Okay, so let's create a new material. I think we have two materials here, and one must be for this piece. Yeah, so this one doesn't have a material here, this one does. Let's just add a material to tell that where that piece is. Let's make a black. Actually, don't even have to edge. So, uh, select it in a loop just to select this front face right here. We could even uh, select faces, select that face, create a new material, and then let's just name it front piece for now. Piece. Wait, that's wrong, I think. Sorry. There we go. All right, so let's color this to a black type color. Brownish, there we go. Something gray, black, that's all right. Something like that. And for the display uh, viewport color, we need to select this little white box right here and select the color picker. Pick this color right here. And it picks with the same color, so that's pretty good. All right, so um, this is the main material, so we'll name this uh, main box material. And let's create a new material for this. Just go ahead and do it. Um, outer piece material, I guess we'll just call it that for now. I'll just name it that. I don't know what that's called. All right. Let's go into front view again. Select the box, go into edit mode. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, should have told you when I first started, I'm using Blender 2.72. That's the exact version I'm using. I don't know if it actually says, it actually doesn't say. The, oh, it's alpha, okay. So that's that. Uh, that, is, that is the that is the reason why I have this menu when you this menu that pops up. All right. So I will start next. I will add in two edge loops again. Actually, yeah, I'll add in two edge loops. Scale them in and move them in the direction towards this. Try to fit the image. Scale them towards the USB port. And then add a new edge loop right here and add another one here. All right, now we'll probably have to add two edge loops in here, scale them outward on the X axis. And let's add another edge loop here and another one here. You don't have to be exact. All right. And let's go ahead and add two in the middle right here in the center and scale them up about there. All right. Now um, we want to actually add edge loops to shape out this shape right here, create this shape. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create one here and one here, just matching the edge right there. And let's switch to vertice mode because we should have already, actually should have already been in vertice mode. We can actually select these two vertices uh, actually this one here and this one press s on the keyboard and x to scale in on the x-axis drag inward and there we go so let's add one edge loop here one here i think that might be uneven a bit but we can deal with it scale it out a bit and another edge loop here and it doesn't look like there's an edge loop there but i'll add one right there and then we can just try to match this shape right here front piece at least this piece so that we can add another edge loop on the outside about there 
scale these two in, scale these two in, and these two. Uh, I think I selected the wrong thing. There we go. All right, so let's add another edge loop in right here. Scale it in, and then let's just scale it in about there, or move it in a bit. Let's move this in a bit right there. And let's select these two vertices down here, scale them in, try to match them. Let's move these in, try to match the image right there. It's probably not the best way to do this, but it works. So, actually, should have been an edge loop probably right here. Smooth out this piece right about there. And then just try to match these here. Oh, there should have been a very uh, edge loop there as well. And move this vertice right here in like that. And right here, we need to move this vertice and this one. As well as this one. Keep matching as close as you can to the image. Make sure everything's right. Looks like everything's pretty good. Yeah, looks a little bit crooked. We could actually fix this by adding a mirror modifier right down the middle, but then again, might have some problems. So let's go ahead and do that though. Let's delete this vertice, these vertices, and let's make this a separate object as well. Uh, select it by selecting one vertice and pressing Control L on the uh, keyboard. Press P, selection, and then go into object mode. And we're going to add the origin point down the center of this object right here. Let's go into object mode, Control Shift Alt C on the keyboard, origin to 3D cursor. There we go. Now we have it right down the middle. And all we have to do is select mirror. And there we go. We have a mirror right down the middle. Now, if you go into front view and back into edit mode, you will see that we have, we need to turn on clipping and smash these together. These are really weird. We need to move it out. Clipping is on. Now let's move this to the center like that. All right. Now, the only way we can see this really is if we apply this modifier. So let's go ahead and apply it. And let's remove doubles. Okay, there's no vertices. Make sure there's no face down the middle right here. It can very can make it look very ugly. Mess up everything. It can mess up everything. And there you go. You can see it's a very nice mirror down the middle. And I'm going all over. Okay, there we go. Um, now what we need to do is just add these together again. Select this one and select the other. Press Control J to join them together. And now we can just merge these two vertice loops together. Just select the loop and press G X on the keyboard and make sure you have snapping turned on. I have snapping vertex snap element turned on. And now we can press A to deselect and A again to select. And X, no actually, we need to do control E. No, is it control E? Oh no, no it's W, I'm sorry. W remove doubles. It removed 12 vertices as you can see and there is a face in between these we need to remove. So let's go into face uh, face edit mode and select this button so that you're not selecting other vertices on the other side like this on accident. Let's press C in the keyboard to get this little selection box. And we selected most of the vertices or the faces I mean. Press delete on the keyboard and select faces. There we go. Deleted the faces. Let's make sure everything in here is correct. Looks like this side for some reason did not merge. I don't know why, but something went wrong. All right, so let's just scale this in on the x-axis, SX0. It merges those two together and remove the doubles. So I don't know why there was extra vertices there, but at least we fixed it. Let's go into object mode. And yes, so we have our perfect shape there.
make sure it's actually on doesn't have to be exactly onto the reference image because there are little things that might be different with the reference image because it might be not at a perfect straight orthographic uh, front on view to the camera looks like a little bit of this was moved so let's move this edge right here over there let's make sure it's being covered by this yes it is okay we can move it actually a little bit out there we go that's fine fine as it is all right it's pretty good now we've modeled this and we've um actually not modeled it excuse me but we have actually added the edge loops to shape it and now what we want to do is actually um, put in some vertices for these little blue pieces right there they actually come out actually what we can do is just put a cube in there and never mind so thank you guys for watching that was part two on how to model a steam machine